What's going on people? Welcome to the King's Monologue. And today we're on to Nefertiti. It was a natural progression considering we've just done Akhenaten. I thought it would be quite nice to give you both of these videos back to back. Akhenaten followed by Nefertiti. Now, I just want to dive straight into this one. So, reconstructing Nefertiti was not easy. <laughs> I'm going to say that it wasn't easy at all. There's so much controversy, so much contradiction, so much difficulty when it comes to drafting images of Nefertiti. Now, obviously, the one image that comes to all of our mind when it comes to Queen Nefertiti is that Berlin bust. Obviously, that's probably the one that's being advertised around the world. You know, it's the one that, you know, the German sills is the most beautiful woman that's ever existed. You know, it's widely touted. And look, there's no there's no two ways about it. If you look at the various images of Nefertiti, not even just that one, it's very rare in for our history that we see someone with those kind of features. And when I'm talking about a feature, I'm talking about the, the lips, the strong cheekbones. We don't really know what her nose actually looked like. But even with the very limited amount of Nefertiti preserved on a single bust that we have, we can presume that she definitely was quite a, a beautiful woman. I know her name um, is synonymous with beauty, so it was acknowledged. It wasn't just like this is just being made up. It was acknowledged that she was a very beautiful woman. Now, where does difficulty come in? Well, first of all, let's talk about the Berlin bust. The Berlin bust, you may or may not know, has a few controversies with it. The first controversy is it never came with a cartouche. Um, so as a result of never coming with a cartouche, it becomes very difficult to assume that this is a portrait of someone. It was an unfinished bust, but they assumed it was a bust of royalty and thus Nefertiti because of the crown and because it did have some precious gems in it. The problem is the people that found it, they, there was a German artist who came out and claimed that he had made the bust and he had used Egyptian pigments that he had found and used the bust as a, as a testing ground, this fake bust as a testing ground. Now I'm not going to say whether or not I believe that the bust is fake because I think there's there's arguments on either side of it um, and I think we could classify it as a real or a fake one. I don't, I don't really mind. I think you could say it's real. One thing you, it, that is a very large possibility is that it's been tampered. Um, and Egyptian artwork is tampered to this day so that's definitely not a stretch when you see them in Egypt and they're cleaning cleaning artworks often you'll go in there and you'll see them with dark skin dark pigment and then when it's finished cleaning it will be all red red and pink so that red and pink that we're all really kind of familiar with in ancient Egypt isn't the original color that's when they finished their cleaning the original tone is the brown but they need to clean that brown paint off as it goes on right underneath the nose of the antiquities department in Egypt it still goes on to this day so you know the tampering of Egyptian works is 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 what it is and so has this Berlin bust being tampered I would say it's highly likely is it a total fakery I have no idea can we use it yes why not i think there's enough evidence maybe just enough to suggest that this might have had the likeness of nefertiti on it at some stage and so to that degree there's some elements of it that i'm happy to borrow now where am i going to be drawing the line in terms of my rule set well i'm going to be looking for consistency amongst the various artworks of nefertiti and this is where it gets a little bit more complicated because if it wasn't complicated enough that we had that one bust that there's a few question marks over there's remaining busts now just like with Akhenaten, we have fragments of Nefertiti where we can just see her lips or just see a part of her face. Likewise, we have really realistic busts and I think the one that I took as the authority in this reconstruction was the one that actually came as a pair with the one that I took as an authority for my reconstruction of Akhenaten. There was actually two of them that were kind of like together. They're both very realistic, I would say largely unstylized portraits of the pair of them and so it's quite good for me to kind of like take those both into consideration but then also we have the future portraits of her so like I said the kind of in my Akhenaten video you have these portraits of her when she's a bit older and she's with Akhenaten there together and you can see what she kind of grew into maybe after she's had a few of these children but the good thing about this even though it's just the statuette it does give us a bit of consistency in regards to some of those features so we can say oh well that's probably what the nose looked like based on what she looked like older that's probably what the lips looked like based on what she looked like when she was older so you've got all of these little kind of ingredients all working together allowing me to put together what at least is a hopefully 
semi-accurate reconstruction of what Nefertiti looked like. One of the other things that I haven't touched on is the, the KV-35 YL or KV-35 Younger Lady that was found in the Armana tombs or the kind of the New Kingdom tombs. That is touted to potentially be Nefertiti, but obviously without a cartouche um, alongside it and without enough corroborating evidence, they can't be sure that that actually is Nefertiti. So once again, just like with the KV-55 slash Akhenaten, but we don't know if it's Akhenaten, we have the KV-35 young lady who could be um, Nefertiti, but we're not quite sure. Even more additional kind of complexity when it comes to um, creating, or when it came to creating the bust of Nefertiti. There's all these other busts that you could find around the place that are all labelled as portraits of Nefertiti, but some of them aren't. And I watched a really interesting video the other day about you know Nefertiti's six daughters that she had. She had six daughters, and some of them ascended the throne. So there's this theory that Nefer Nefer Aten, who became queen after Akhenaten or Amotep the, Amenhotep IV, there's large speculation that that's Nefertiti. That was just her kind of her name that she took on after. But there's also speculation that Nefer Nefer Aten could have been one of Queen Nefertiti's daughters who took the throne. And Akhenaten's children, his daughters at least, are very rarely spoken of. But it's quite interesting to kind of figure out, you know, which of these portraits are of Nefertiti and which ones are of her daughter. Now, one of the things that person given the presentation actually pointed out is actually Akhenaten has a very prominent chin and one of the clues as to whether or not we're looking at a portrait of Nefertiti or one of her children is actually the daughters seemed to inherit the strong chin or that you know that prominent chin of Akhenaten so they have a slightly larger chin I'm not going to speculate too much <laughs> I'm not going to dive into the realms of history because I'm just trying to focus here on reconstructions but for this reason some of these portraits I didn't use because I made up my mind that that's not Nefertiti or at least there's enough of a question mark over that as to whether or not we can classify it as Nefertiti. So in the end, I really just boiled down to this fragment. There was this, like I said, um, portrait of her, which is kind, kind of comes of a pair, as a pair with the one with Akhenaten as well. So there's this portrait of her. There is the Berlin bus, which I only use kind of because of that iconic hat. And because I think broadly speaking, maybe the shape of the face might be what Queen Nefertiti looked like. But I do also believe, if, I, if I'm gonna be honest with you, I do believe there's been some degree of tampering <laughs> with this portrait so I'm going to leave it at that so you can hear the anguish in my voice <laughs> there was a lot of difficulty when it came to creating this portrait of Nefertiti but I think that's that I think that's enough of me kind of giving you the synopsis and giving you a run through I just want to invite you into my world so you can experience some of this pain with me by the way this is the final reconstruction that I came up with Yes, in the end, I was quite happy with this reconstruction, as I as I always am, to be honest with you, because if I weren't happy, I probably wouldn't show it with you. There's a lot of reconstructions I've done that you'll probably never see. Um, but I was quite happy with this reconstruction. It was really difficult. The, the, the largest difficulty for me was the nose, but then we have these reconstructions that are all consistent within themselves. The face shape, I think, was a lot easier. This, once again, is a younger Nefertiti. As she got older and had children, the, the face did get broader, as you can see in the statuette. But the face shape, by and large, is rather consistent. So I'm relatively happy with the face shape, with the way that looks. I am, I'd say I'm very happy with the, you know, the eyebrows. The lips, are, I think, are consistent across enough of her portraits for me to say that's what her lips look like but then once again the, the nose was the, the large question mark about where I let that settle in terms of its width and even even its shape because of these kind of conflicting images of Nefertiti but by and large I mean if I'm going to be totally honest with you the best ever portrait of Nefertiti had to be the living portrait which was Iman you know who remembers the remember the time video by Michael Jackson and Iman 
that is just perfection to me. Even to this day, I look back at those images and I'm like, that, that's perfect. You can't, you can't really beat that, can you? Um, so yeah, before I even knew about Diop, you know, Michael Jackson was educating me with music videos back in my youth. So, you know, you know RIP, rest in peace to the great Michael Jackson there. And thank you to him for, you know, opening my eyes from a very young age for what was being hidden from us <laughs> by these scoundrels in Hollywood. But anyway, uh, that's it. That's the that's the end of this video. I think um, I'm relatively relatively pleased with where we ended up with Nefertiti. I think it's very unlikely that this ends up being the last version. I can see another revision somewhere down the line as maybe I'm exposed to more portraits and exposed to more information about the way Nefertiti looked. Those of you who are subscribed to this channel know that I'm quite lucid and quite fluid with my approach to these uh, reconstructions and I am willing to be corrected and I am willing to correct them if I'm given better information or more data about the way things should look. Um, but this is where I am at the moment and I hope that this reconstruction brings some enjoyment to your day. And please do subscribe if you're not subscribed already. If you're interested in the merch, you can buy yourself a, a t-shirt or a sweatshirt or a hoodie down at the bottom. If you want to look fly, please do cop one from down below. If not, please do not feel any obligation to do, do that. Um, obviously, you know, I appreciate everyone just subscribing and interacting in this channel. It means so much to me. See you on the next one. <laughs>